Hey guys and welcome to another colour grading tutorial. Today we're going to be editing like the artist Jack Harding. Um, if you don't know who he is, go ahead, check him out on Instagram. This is the sort of work he does. Um, really cool sort of autumnal moody vibes. Um, and what I did is I went through all of our Instagram comments, I went through all of our YouTube comments and I had a look at what people wanted to see and what you guys wanted to see. Um, and this guy called Derish Dev, if you're watching, thank you so much. If you're not watching, comment your ideas down below. Uh, but he said, can you try and replicate Jack Harding? So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video, trying to replicate Jack Harding. Now, if you want to follow along with this video, come on to wesaturate.com, search for Iceland, and this is the photo we're going to be editing. So we're going to be trying to edit like this, um, and we're going to be editing this photo here. So um, let's go on to Lightroom. Okay, so the idea of this video is I'm going to try and take you through how I think he edits. Um, and I'm going to try and show you as much detail as I can, but I won't have enough time to show you loads of detail and how to do loads of things within Lightroom. If you want to learn how to kind of do advanced editing within Lightroom, I recommend you click the top link in our description. We've got a free training. It's going to teach you all the advanced techniques within Lightroom you need to know. Um, it's going to teach you everything for free. Um, and it's just basically a much, much, much more advanced training than what you get from our YouTube videos just because we don't have time to do it on YouTube. So if you want that, go ahead, click that. Spaces are filling up. Uh, go ahead, register for that, and you can grab that free training. If you want to grab our presets as well, that link is also in the description. And if you're one of those haters who hates me promoting that, leave, I guess. Don't watch the video. Um, right, so let's get started. We're going to, first of all, brighten up this whole image just because it's far too dark. Um, so I'm going to boost the exposure. I'm going to drop those highlights, not too much, just because I like the amount of depth it's putting in the image. Uh, boost up the shadows just to brighten up, bring in some more detail. Boost the whites and drop the blacks. Okay, and I think that's a good starting point. Maybe drop the highlights a little bit more. I want to be able to bring in enough detail into the sky, but I want to have all of that contrast in the water. So the best thing to do from here, let's just go onto his uh, photo so we can kind of see, uh, so you guys know what we're doing. Um, now he has, so his images are very dark, they're very moody, uh, very contrasty, um, and they're actually kind of like a warmed up photo. So how we're going to do that is come onto this temperature slider, we're going to drag up this temperature slider until we get somewhere, I reckon around there. I'm aiming to get the greens around this colour here. Um, so this orangey sort of greens, we're going to add a little bit of contrast into the image, um, maybe a little bit more mess around with the clarity. I think we want to take away a little bit of clarity. Uh, and that's it for the basic slider. We're going to come back in a bit and mess around with the vibrance and saturation and see how that affects the whole image. Um, but I think we're going to move on to the tone curve now. So the tone curve, basically what we're going to try and do is add in some fade and some contrast. Now to do that, if you haven't watched our other videos of fade and contrast, I like to do that within the tone curve. Um, now fade is where you get your blacks and you kind of make them more grey, you kind of brighten up your blacks if that makes sense. Um, now these sort of moody artists, they tend to do that a lot in their photos, it really kind of flattens out the image, makes everything look kind of smooth and soft, but also very moody as well. So that's what we're going to do, uh, and it's very easy to do, so make sure you're on the point tone curve, just click this button here if you're not. Um, we're going to add an S curve, which is just going to add in a lot of contrast into the image. So we may need to go back into the basics panel and just remove some of that contrast. Uh, and already you can see the amount of contrast it's added to the overall image. Then we're going to get this slider, uh, this point here, drag it up and you can see how it starts to add in that fade. Now that's too much fade, but we kind of want somewhere in the middle, somewhere around there I think. So already you can see how we're getting this sort of colour around here. If you look at the waterfall and you look at this area here. Now, our image is too teal, it's too blue. Um, so a couple of ways to solve that is to come into the split toning or we can come back into the basic panel and adjust the temperature, but I want to try split toning first. Now, split toning is going to add a certain colour to the highlights. So if you press Option or Alt to your keyboard and you drag this slider along, you can see these are the colours we're going to add to the highlights, which is mainly the waterfall. And I want to try and add sort of a purple because if you look closely here it's that's like a blue this is kind of a warmer but mildly purple by the looks of it so that's what we're looking for somewhere I reckon let's try there and then add it in the saturation at about 10% something like that so not too much 
um, but enough to kind of give a little bit of an undertone color. So you can't see much of a difference, but it does take away some of that blue. And then we're going to come onto the shadows, which is where we're really going to get a lot of difference. So we can do one of two things. One, we can try and go for this sort of color, which is the color of the, the grass here. But I think that's going to be easier to do within the HSL sliders. But just for an idea, that's what it would look like. Alternatively, we're going to go for a deep purpley blue again, somewhere around here. I reckon around 255, something like that. I think that would be quite good because we're getting that sort of, that's, this is mainly where I'm looking at the moment is here. Um, I want to try and get this sort of colour here. Okay, so now we're going to come onto the HSL sliders and we're going to try and work on getting these greens the right colour and these blues the right colour. So, I mean, I'm red, green, colour blind, so getting these colours is a little bit tricky for me, but, you know, we'll try our best. Um, okay, so come on to the hues. Uh, and we're gonna get the greens. If you drag the greens to the right, you see it makes it really, really blue, kind of weirdly alien. Now if you make it to the left, it makes it really brown. We want somewhere in between, but you see if we go to the yellows, we can also do the same, makes it really brown, makes it really green, well, a bit more green. Um, so we're gonna take the green slider probably halfway down, somewhere around there, the yellow slider, and I'm just gonna keep flicking forwards and backwards until I get something that I think is pretty similar. I reckon we need a little bit more green in the image. Um, and we're going to go for around there at the moment. Now we're going to come down to the luminance slider and we're going to brighten up those greens. We're going to brighten up those yellows just because I want those little highlights in the colors. And we can really see we're beginning to get a very similar color now. Okay, so the images are coming together. Next thing to do is work on the blue. So if you take the aquas and the blues to the left, you get very teal. If you take it to the right, you get like purple. Now, we don't want um, either, really. We kind of want it to be pretty neutral by the looks of it. Um, so it's got too much teal in it at the moment. So let's see what happens when we drag up the aqua slider. Take out some of that teal and then the blue slider. Take it up a little bit. Take out a little bit more teal. Now, it's looking kind of purple at the moment. So... We will have to desaturate the blues, I think. So that'll do for the time being. As for the reds and oranges, really not going to do an awful lot because there's no real reds or oranges in this image. So leave those as they are. Right, so the next thing is the saturation. Um, actually, no, we're not going to do the... No, yeah. Let's do a saturation. So drop the saturation, the blues and the aquas. Ching, 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 like that. Right, and you see what's happened here is the split toning colour in the highlights is actually just kind of bleeding through too much so we're going to take that down to zero in the highlights i think that's going to look a lot better so saturation in the blues we'll just boost that a little bit more drop the aquas um i think we'll just add in a hint of teal in the blues so it's very subtle what we've done in the blues but we're trying to take out those like really vibrant colors so that's what they look like before so before after and i'll show you before we did the hsl so before the hsl after the HSL, so that's really made a dramatic difference. Um, okay, then we're going to work in the green saturation. Now, he has pretty vibrant greens and yellows, I think. Yeah, it's pretty vibrant. So let's drop off the... I don't want to overdo it. So if I have, like, a saturation full on both of them, you can see it just looks weird. So we're going to drop it in the yellows and add a little bit more in the greens, just to kind of counteract each other a little bit. And I reckon that's probably about it add a little bit more uh, luminance to the whites or in the sorry so i'm trying to what i'm doing here is adding luminance to the blues and the aquas but if i add it in both it just looks like too bright so if i add it in one or the other i'm trying to get that like powerful contrast in the water that we've got going on here it's a very small section of the image just there so if we look at this area here if i whiten up the both it looks a little bit strange so what I'm doing is trying to add in some contrast. So I think the best way of doing that is dropping the blacks and increasing the aquas to about 100%. And there we go. There we have it for the HSL slider. So if I turn that off and that on, you can see the dramatic difference that's made. Okay, close that up. Now we can come into the camera calibration and just see what we can do with that. But I think we're going to mess with green primary, probably take the green primary to the left a bit. And that's going to sort of work on this area here. Um, and I think we're basically done, to be honest. Next thing we can try is getting this gradient slider on the sky um, and just trying to drop the highlights on the sky just to bring in 
a lot more detail in the sky and there we have it that is the edited photo so that's before and that's after and that's what it's supposed to look like so if you guys did enjoy this video if you wanted to learn more or anything like that just stick around subscribe like comment any video ideas if you want to be featured in the video like this dude uh, just comment down below and we'll let you know uh, if your video is going to be featured well you'll see it if you subscribe um, and we'll see you in the next video live long and prosper